Hi, and welcome to Module 7 of Lecture 10. Um, I misspoke last time at the end of the previous module when I said we would be going on to properties of these things, of determinants and transposes now. We will be doing that in the next module, but first we have to discuss the matrix inverse. This is pretty important since it's most of the point of why we calculated the determinant in the first place, in the previous module. The matrix inverse is the inverse of a matrix. Duh, okay. <laughs> what does that mean? That means if I take a matrix A and I multiply by the inverse, which is this a to the negative one thing, no, that's not one over a, that is the inverse matrix of a. That's gonna equal i, the identity matrix. So it's the multiplicative inverse. Much as um, if x is a scalar, one over x is the multiplicative inverse equaling one, a inverse is the multiplicative inverse of a. Further, it has nice properties in that it doesn't matter which direction you multiply in. I can left multiply A inverse or right multiply A inverse, I still end up with I, the identity matrix. So that's convenient. Why else do we need it? Um, well, there are a bunch of reasons why we need it. We, we're gonna use it in the next lecture when we talk about solving equations using matrix inversions. Um, you might probably more commonly use it when dealing with solving for coefficients, correlation coefficients, I mean, regression coefficients using matrices. So for instance, the vector of, of coefficients is equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose y vector, where x the big x's are matrices corresponding to um, data on your independent variables, and the y is a dependent variable vector, and beta is your, co is your coefficient. And this we're going to do this explicit example in the last module of this lecture. So here's another reason for inverses. In general, you can invert a square matrix, but not all square matrices, just square matrices that are invertible, and it's invertible if its determinant is non-zero. Why is that? We can see it um, on the next screen by looking at the definition of a, of a inverse. The definition of an inverse is one over the determinant of the matrix times the transpose of the cofactor matrix. The cofactor matrix is sometimes called the, the transpose of the cofactor matrix is sometimes called the adjoint matrix. So you might see it like this instead. Adjoint A. Remember the cofactor matrix, well the cofactors were taken by taking the minor of an element and multiplying it by the appropriate sign. So the cofactor matrix is obtained by taking the cofactors of every element in the matrix A um, and then putting them into a matrix. The transpose of that is what enters into the matrix inverse equation. That's probably as clear as mud, so let's um, give some examples. We'll start with the two by two case. Um, in a two by two matrix, let's say we have A11, A12, A21, and A22. Well, how do we do this? Well, it turns out cofactors are pretty simple when you have a two by two matrix because um, you can just cross out everything but the other term. So, um, see how that works. Well, first the determinant we've we've talked about already. That's going to be a one one times a two two minus a one two a two one. That's the determinant of a. If you remember that, go back to the previous module. Now it was a cofactor matrix. Well, the cofactor for one one equals negative one times one plus one, that's just one, times the minor of a one one. Well, if I were to cross out um, the first row and the first com the first row and the first column, so let's first see if this works. First row, first column, I end up with a two two. So this just gives me a two two. And the determinant of a scalar is just the number itself, so I don't have to worry about taking the determinant of my new matrix, it's just a two two. And I can do the same thing over here. A12 is going to equal negative 1, 1 plus 2. That's negative 1 to the third, which is negative 1, times A12. Um, so that's A12. Sorry, what am I saying? A12. That's the. <laughs> sorry. Um, that's actually right, but. Um, times the determinant of, of A12. So that's not right. A12, so you cross out the first row and the first column. That leaves A21. And similarly, we can keep going. That's negative one to two plus one 
times a12, and same thing over here, negative 1 to the 2 plus 2, just 1, times a11. And again, all these are taken by, by taking the appropriate row and column corresponding to the element over here, and the thing remaining is your cofactor, is your minor, and the cofactor is the minor times the sign, the appropriate sign. So now we have the cofactor matrix. So we can write C is going to equal A22, negative A21, negative A12, and A11. The adjoint matrix is the transpose of this. So the adjoint matrix is going to equal A22, negative A12. Go to flipping here. And again, if you don't remember how to take the adjoint, um, sorry, if you don't remember how to take the transpose, go back to the couple modules ago. There's the adjoint matrix. So the inverse of A is going to equal 1 over A11, A22, minus A12, A21, times A22, negative A12, negative A21, A11. In other words, this is um, shorthand for 2 by 2. It's 1 over the determinant. You take the diagonal ones and switch them, and put negative signs in front of the off diagonals. It's just a simple way of looking at this. Let's do a quick example before moving on to a more general case. Three, one, um, let's see, five, two. There you go. What's the inverse of this thing? Well, the determinant is going to be six minus five equals one. Oh, that's convenient. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean to do that. That's awesome. Okay, the determinant is equal to. So this is a, the determinant of a equals this, this is 1. A inverse is going to equal flipping this to here and putting negatives in front of here. And 1 over 1 is just 1. So there we go. We can check this to make sure this works. A inverse a is going to be 2, negative 1, negative 5, 3, times 3, 1, 5, 2. Again, Row, column, um, so 2 times 3 is 6, negative 1 times 5 is negative 5, 6 minus 5 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, 3 times 5 is 15, negative 15 plus 15 is 0, and finally, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1. And indeed, this is the identity matrix, and this is, in fact, the inverse. And you can try it, you can try it home to switch them around to get the same thing and still the inverse. So there's an example of a 2 by 2 matrix. And oftentimes, if you do a lot of inverses, you get used to just memorizing the formula and not having to go back to the original definition of the inverse. However, you do have to use the original definition when you have a more complicated matrix. I'm not going to go through and write out the general A11, A22 kind of definition for the 3x3. Three three. You can apply the same rules as before. I will do one example of this. Um, there's other examples in the book, and there are examples um, you can figure out yourself. And there's problems. I mean, I mean, there are problem sets and problem sessions, but also you can just make up a random matrix, as I'm doing right now, um, and see if that works. So here's my random matrix that I'm going to make up. Let's see. Do, 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 do. And I'll make my life a little easier, so I'll put some zeros in it. But I don't want to make the, the rows or columns um, dependent on each other in the same parallel line. So I'll see what I can do here. That's 2, 1, uh, 2. And then let's say 5, 0, 1. There we go. Hope that works. <laughs> um, I don't see any obvious dependencies, so hope that that works just fine. OK. There we go. Here's our matrix. What do we do with this? Well, first we need the determinant. To do the determinant, we actually need three of the cofactors. So we we'll do that now um, in order to save ourselves some effort later. So let's expand along the first column because it's a little easier. Um, actually, we we'll do the first row in this case because it's better. It's a better practice, and also because we we'll need all the cofactors anyway for the inverse. So we'll do that now. So let's compute all the cofactors. So C11 is going to be. This is not going to fit on the screen, so I'm in trouble. I'm going to create small. So C11 is going to be what you get if you remove the first column in the first row. That's the determinant of 1 times 0. So the determinant of this matrix over here. 1 times 0 um, is 0. 
5 times 2 is negative. This is 10. So 0 minus 10 is negative 10. The cofactor on 1, 1, you can get used to it. Um, if the two, if the row and column is summed to an even number, the sign on the cofactor is 1. If the row and column is summed to an odd number, then the, then the sign on the cofactor is negative 1. So 1, 1 is an even number, and you add them. So it's going to be a 1, so we end up with negative 10. And we'll keep going here. C12 two is 2, so we take the first row and the first column here. I'm going to use blue instead of student stuff. So first row, first column, that leaves 0 times 0, 0 minus 5. So that's negative 5, but the first row and the second column add to an odd number. So we have negative 1 times negative 5, or just positive 5. And now we'll do 1, 3, which is going to equal, um, you get rid of the first row and the last column. That leaves this submatrix. The minor is 2 times 0 is 0, minus 1, so that's negative 1. So the minor is negative 1. The cofactor is negative 1 times the sine. The sine 1 plus 3 is even, so the sine is 1, so it's just negative 1. So the first 3, and we'll keep going. We'll do the determinant later. So that's 2, 1 is this one times this one. That leaves 2, 1, 2, 0. So 2 times 0 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. So that's negative 2. However, the sign on this, since these are odd, the sum is odd, the sign will be negative 1. So there should be a positive 2. 2, 2 is taken by removing this row and this column. I mean, sorry, this row and this column. That leaves 3 times 0 is 0, minus 1 times 1 is 1. So that's negative 1. The sign is even, so it's just 1. So it's, so it's negative 1 total for the cofactor. Again, this is pretty fast, but the beauty of these video things is you can go down and just stop me and go back and do it yourself on a piece of paper, which is much better for you anyway, um, and make sure you know how to do these things. So 2, 3, second row, third column. That leaves 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 times 1 is 2, 6 minus 2 is 4. However, the sum of these two things is odd, so the sign is negative, so it's negative 4. I keep going. C3, 1. That's this element here, so the submatrix is gotten by removing the first column in the third row. That leaves 2 times 5 is 10, minus two, 1 is 9, so that's a minor of 9. The cofactor, the sign here, the sum is even, so the sign is 1, so it's just 9. Now, finally, we um, 3, 2, so that's third row, second column, leaving 3 times 5 is 15, minus 1 times 0 is 0, so it's 15, but the sum of these is odd, so that's a negative 1 sign, so we have negative 15. And finally, 3, 3 is going to be um, removing the third the third row and the third column. Right? That leaves 1 times 3 is 3, minus 2 times 0 is 0, so that's 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, that's an even number, so the sign is positive, and we're just left with 3. Is that right? Uh, yes, 3. And there we go. Now we have everything we need to do this stuff. The adjoint matrix is the, is the um, transpose of the cofactor matrix, so all the Diagonal cofactors end up where they're supposed to be. The adjoint cofactors, sorry, the, the um, off diagonal cofactors get flipped. The rows and columns get flipped. So we can write the adjoint matrix. Um, first, we'll do the determinant. We can expand along anything we want. So you know what? Let's actually expand along the um, this one here, since we've calculated it already. So we'll expand along this one. That's 2, 1. Um, so, sorry, expand along this, um, let's do this column here. So the first one is 3. The element is 3 times the cofactor for 1, 1, which is negative 10. And the um, second one is 0, so that's just going to be 0. 0 times the appropriate one for 2, 1, which is 2. And we want to add 9 times the cofactor times the one here, so it's one. We get negative 30 plus nine equals negative 21. There you go. There is the determinant. We could check if you wanted to by looking at something else. 
let's use the first row to check. 3 times um, negative 10 is still negative 30. Plus 2 times 5 is 10, that's negative 20. Plus 1 times negative 1 is negative 21, so negative 21. There you go. So it checks out no matter how you do it, and again, you can try it at home and play around with it if you want. Okay. So there you go there. Um, that's the determinant of A. So the inverse is going to be 1 over negative 21 times the transpose of the cofactor matrix. We'll stick in the diagonal points first because they don't go anywhere. Now C12 transpose becomes 2, 1. So we'll put the 2, 1 down here, the 1, 2 down here. 1, 3 becomes 3, 1. So we'll put the 1, 3 over here. 2, 1 becomes 1, 2. So we'll put that one over here. 2, 3 becomes 3, 2. So we'll put this one over here. 3, 1 becomes 1, 3. So we'll put that over here. And 3, 2 becomes 2, 3. So we'll put that over here. Again, that's pretty fast. I advise you to just pause, go through, and make sure you get the same thing yourself. So you go. There's the adjoint matrix. Um, we could check this thing. I'm going to try to actually have room on this piece of paper. But let's just try. We're going to multiply the whole thing by A. We should get the identity matrix. Let's be screwed up somewhere. Well, first row. Um, first row here. I'm banking on the fact that these little dots show up on the screen. First row here times first column here is negative 30 plus 0 plus 9. That would be negative 21. But you divide by negative 21. So the first one is, in fact, 1. That's very promising. Okay. First one times second column is negative 10 times 2 is negative 20 plus 2. That's negative 18 plus 18, which is 9 times 2. That's 0. Hooray! So that gives you the one first row, second column is over here. First row, third column is negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. Plus 2 times 5 is 10. That's 0. 0 times 9 is 0. So that is also 0. Hooray! This is, the, this is working. Okay. 5 times um, 3 is 15. Minus plus 0. Minus 15. That gives you 0 over here. 5 times 2 is 10. Negative 1. That's, neg that's 9. And um, negative 15 times 2 is negative 30. That gives you negative 21. Divided by negative 21 is 1. So that's good. Now second row, third column. So 5 times 1 is 5. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. Plus negative 15 times 0 is 0. So that's 0. Almost there. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Plus negative 4 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3, so negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Almost done. Third row, second column, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, so it's negative 6 total. 3 times 2 is 6, so that's 0. We're going to add, all add it up together. And finally, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. You add them up, you get negative 21. 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 21 divided by negative 21 is 1. And in fact, this random matrix we just made up has an inverse. It's invertible. It has an inverse. We found it just like that. I'm proud of myself because I made that up by myself. All right, um, I'm gonna fly. So there you go. There is the matrix inverse. You can do this by hand, or if you don't want to do this by hand, it turns out there are programs out there that can deal with matrix multiplication and inversion and stuff. And when you actually go through and compute, um, your regression coefficients, for instance, it will do it for you. <laughs> um, you do not want to be taking a giant matrix full of stuff and inverting it, even if it's not so big. All right, there you go. There's the matrix inverse. Now in the next module, we will deal with, with the properties of transposes and determinants and such. Thank you very much.